right, welcome everybody. Very excited that you are all here and I think with absolute certainty that you're going to be excited that you are here as well for the message for tonight. The sense of hope and the possibility and I am Dr. Marcus Chokos. I am a chiropractor in Queanbeyan. I am the author of the best-selling book, The Arthritis Solution and this is the second edition. And when you hold on to the end, we have a, I think a wonderful gift and a present for you as well. But let me start by commenting, recognizing and acknowledging that arthritis is a real epidemic in today's society. It is a significant deterrent to health, to quality of life, to experiencing the fullness of life. And it is my aim and the last 28 years that I've really dedicated on this journey to bring a sense of understanding to this very misrepresented and often misunderstood condition to also provide the hope and the possibility of greater freedom, independence, mobility and enhanced quality of life. So be prepared, at least in my mind, to perhaps um, have some myths um, bust, some sense of misunderstanding awaken to a, a new possible reality for you. And that's why, as, I, as we stand here this evening, there may be some of you who already know that you have an arthritic or degenerative condition. You may be here because someone you know or someone you love has an arthritic or degenerative condition. Or you may think, I don't know if I have arthritis or an arthritic or degenerative condition, but I'd like to know, to uncover, to understand and find out, or even to prevent an arthritic or degenerative condition, including degenerative disc disease as well. And that has been my dedication for a long, long period of time. And I'm going to share very briefly why that is the case, why this is something I've dedicated so much of my life to. And it begins when you first graduate, whether it is a medical practitioner or a chiropractor, you get the piece of paper to go out and do the best you can with the knowledge and the skills you have. And arthritis is certainly addressed and covered within the course curriculum of medicine, of chiropractic, of many of the healthcare professions. And the textbook information available arthritis, and many of you may experience this as well, is, well, there's not much you can do about it. You can certainly hope to prevent it or minimize it. You hope to be able to live with it, but at times the pain can become more significant and then you need to take painkilling medication, anti-inflammatory medication. You may get some exercises or at the end, steroid medications and, and hopefully never surgery. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The reality is though, most medical practitioners, even most chiropractors, will tell you there's very little that can be done about arthritis that is a natural part of aging and that it is a continuing decline over time. And that was the situation I found myself in when I graduated as a chiropractor, except for the fact my father had been disabled due to arthritis and at the age of 50 was unable to work again. He had been a builder. He had worked very hard his whole life. In fact, probably much of my work ethic comes from the fact that when you observe people working hard for so long, you embody that within your own principled way of living. And I watched him work and I watched him be pensioned out, unable to work anymore, and the impact that on, had on his health and his life. And I'd graduated as a chiropractor and I knew that at that point in time, I thought I could do as much as I could possibly do to help him. But there were limits to what could be done and I was frustrated and I was disillusioned. I thought, well, the whole purpose to become a practitioner is to be able to help as many people as is humanly possible and to be able to create almost miraculous changes and create breakthroughs in people's health and quality of life. And so I was frustrated, even disillusioned and upset when the impact was not as great as I would like to it have been. And so I began researching, saying, well, there must be a solution. There must be something more we can do for arthritic and degenerative conditions. And there is. And that was why when, you know, Dad finally passed away before I had the opportunity to uncover this, uh, I did it, you know, this, this incredible solution, this opportunity for people to heal, that I felt that I owed the world something a little bit more and when we started getting the types of results that we were getting, the impact that was a byproduct of the work that we're going to talk about here tonight, 
uh, it's been my, my great gift, my great blessing to be able to now share this with you know, hundreds of thousands of people through the book and within my practice. And I am both grateful that you are here, humbled at the opportunity to serve, and as I said, I believe we have an immense opportunity for you tonight. So if you or someone you know suffers from arthritis, you are in the right place and we want to share this information. If you have osteoarthritis, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, gout, psoriatic arthritis, degenerative disc disease, or the 100 different types of arthritic conditions, there is still an arthritis solution for you. There are many different manifestations of arthritis, many different ways they present within the body, but they all have one solution. And once you identify cause and remove cause, once you remove interference to the natural and inherent healing potential of the body, the arthritis solution may, remains the same. And that is going to be something that you may not have heard before. And that is why you certainly would not have heard it in most cases from medical practitioners or other practitioners that there is a solution. And that when you remove interference of the healing potential of the body, healing is the natural outpouring and byproduct of that. And we're going to talk in depth about that principle. And this is where I'd like to do a case study, a scientific investigation of understanding you know, a before and after example, and we're going to use this as a framework that we, we move through this conversation with because many people will have that belief that once you've got arthritis, it's something you've got to learn to live with. And I'm going to show you using x-ray evidence and a case study of a client, Les, who has given me permission to share his x-rays, his story and his information. And I'm going to talk through these x-rays. Now, you don't have necessarily the background to be able to determine what a normal film looks like. But what I am going to suggest is when you look here, and I'm going to start with this part here. So this is, if you look at the spine, you are meant to have a square vertebra and a big dark space in between. Okay? You can see there's a dark space there, okay, that doesn't exist here. So you're meant to have a square vertebra a big dark space in between, none of these little lines there, um, and, and not a discoloration of white. Okay, so if there is a normal x-ray, this is not one of them, neither of these. And when a person comes in and they have great healthy normal x-rays, then we're able to look at that from the perspective of, great, we've got a starting place of good health, what comes next? Les, and I'm gonna share his story because some of you may relate to this story, when Les first came into the practice, he did not walk in. He crawled in, and I am not trying to use exaggeration here to make a point. He literally crawled into the practice, and he said, I am booked in for surgery. I'm on the public system, so I've got a six month wait. Can you please help with the pain that I'm in and the suffering that I have? And I committed to helping him to the greatest extent that I could with the arthritis solution. And three months later, out of pain, he didn't have his surgery. He returned to work. And he now lives pain-free, comfortably, at the coast, having retired with an incredible quality of life. And when we look at Les's x-ray, there is severe disc degeneration through here, through here, through here, through here and even through here. He was going to have multi-segmental fusion of his spine and removal of the disc because of the level of damage. So to give you a context, this is a disastrous spinal x-ray. There is a bone spur coming here that is about to fuse his spine together. There is a bone spur down here that is projecting out into the tissue of his body. And there is this white coloration consistent with arthritis and degeneration throughout his body. So he's got an osteoarthritic degenerative disc condition with osteophytic lipping in, me in medical terminology, which really simply means super advanced arthritic and degenerative change. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Les does, is incapable of walking because of the level and extent of pain. His x-rays reveal the reason and cause of that presentation. And then 15 months later, when we look at his x-rays, the disc spaces are opening up. This fusion did not take place. If you can see here, I mean, it's a slightly different level, 
that has actually been resorbed to some degree back into the body. You can see all through here the disc spaces are opening up and the coloration is less white there and while it is still an unhealthy x-ray compared to normal. A miracle took place here from a scientific basis of case study analysis. He moved better, he functioned better, tissue change took place, the type of repair and regeneration that we don't expect to be possible if arthritis is a progressive deteriorating condition that inevitably leads to further breakdown and decay. I have hundreds of these x-rays demonstrating the ability of the body to heal. And I want you to think for a moment, who here has had a cut? No. Yep, everyone's had a cut, I knew that. Pretty simple question. Did it heal? Yes. Anyone had a bruise? Yep. Did it heal? Yep. What about a cough or a cold or a flu? Yep. Did it heal? Yep. That's an interesting thought. Are we designed to heal? The body's smart. It can self-heal, self-regulate and self-organise. Okay, let's push the barrier a little bit further. Has anyone ever had a broken bone? Yes. Did it heal? Yes. Okay, they don't always if you don't set them correctly or if you have continual repeated trauma or if you have other pathology where the bone has softened or there's maybe osteoporotic change. But in the absence of multiple complicating factors, even bone is designed to heal. So fractures can heal and fractures do heal, why not arthritis? A bit of Socratic questioning here that gets us to think, hang on, all of a sudden we've got this belief, well, arthritis is a natural consequence of aging. We're gonna get it all sooner or later at some particular point in time. And when you get it, it's inevitable, it'll decline and it will get worse over time. And we can hope to manage it by trying to keep mobile, taking painkilling and anti-inflammatory medication until we resolve the condition with the inevitable surgery. But I've just shown you a case study from my own practice with my own experience that questions that alongside the thought now that your body's designed to heal. So if it's designed to heal, why doesn't it in the case of arthritis? And the answer is because something is interfering with that in healing potential of the body. Because I can tell you I have, and I actually have kept a number of these, and last week I had a 76 year old with zero arthritis. Beautiful x-ray. My record is a 79 year old with zero arthritis. So why does one 79 year, year old have arthritis and another one does not? Why does one 40 year old have arthritis but a 79 year old not. Unless age is not the primary determining factor of arthritic and degenerative change and that there needs to be something else that we consider. So I'm going to move past this before and after and I want you to just hold in your mind and acknowledge that the body can heal. We have evidence of that and we have experience of that in our own lives. And now we're going to apply that in principle to the arthritic degenerative change that is there. And I wanted to start with this principle. We need new information on arthritis because has anyone gone to their doctor? And I, and I, I preach that this is an open forum and I don't want to be overly personal and you know, ask people to share information they don't feel comfortable with. But has anyone gone to a doctor and told, been told they have arthritis and that there is either nothing they need can do about it that there's nothing that can be done or that you take medications for the rest of your life. Has, has anyone had an experience like that? Would you mind sharing that? I mean, you don't have to, please. I, I may, don't mind to impose. Yeah, I have had a knee replacement. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was told that at the time. But, um, so then, you know, it progresses. <laughs> yeah, arthritis is a progressive condition. And Every single week I have a conversation with a client who comes in and says something as fascinating as, I've, I've, had, I've got arthritis in my knee, I'm just trying to help with some of the pain at the moment because 
they said I'm too young for my hip replacement or my knee replacement, but once it gets bad enough, come back. What if you didn't have to go back because you didn't need it because the joint healed? And I was told I'd be back. <laughs> and I actually had that conversation with somebody today. Now, there is a principle in chiropractic called limitations of matter. I'm not going to say that if a person, if somebody cuts their finger off and I, I adjust them, the finger's not going to grow back. If there is such significant damage, and I still, I actually, I, I will briefly tell this story to give you principle of that and understand that there are things that the body still cannot heal and correct. And, there are, and that's why a conversation always needs to take place. But in, in, before we get to this point of information, so a gentleman came in, similar situation that we saw with Les's x-ray, significant damage. Adjusted him, put him on the, the arthritis solution program, incredible, miraculous transformation. He came back a couple of years later and said, I want you to do the same thing. We took x-rays, he had a cyst, a hole out of his, out of his hip, you know, the size of a golf ball. And I said, well, that's not a chiropractic matter, you need to go actually have surgery on that. He's like, no, no, you fixed me last time, you're going to fix me this time. I don't want to go down the path of doctors. I said, you have a cyst eating away your hip. It is not a chiropractic matter. And he walked out to the reception and said, book me three times a week for the next 12 weeks and, and wrote out a check. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, you're going to fix it. I, I trust. I'm going to have a miracle. I'm like, well, a, he was insistent. So we adjusted. We took an x-ray a few weeks later. The cyst was growing. And finally he believed that it wasn't going to be healed by a miracle. Now, I'm a big believer in miracles, don't get me wrong, but I also am pragmatic enough to know when healing is not going to take place. He went and had the operation in that case and it was incredible for him. And he was grateful for the transparency, the honesty and the openness. But what I do want to say is, as we saw back to Les's x-rays, if there are not limitations to matter, if the damage is not so significant, so dramatic and so pronounced, healing is actually possible. And that's why we need new information on healing and new information on arthritis. That there is things that you can do to enhance, to improve, to prevent, to manage, to alleviate not only the pain of arthritis, but to facilitate healing, regeneration and repair and create a more extraordinary quality of life than you possibly are not only experiencing, but imagined was, imagined was possible. And that is something I want you to hold a thought on, is what would it look like if you found your arthritis solution? for your independence, your mobility, and your freedom. Now, I recognise as we're talking about here, we need new information on arthritis, that you can actually reclaim this. And while I'm not going to go into the detail of these statistics, what is alarming to me as a practitioner is the massive increase, given the increasing ageing population, we know that the population is ageing, and concurrently with that, the medications that are being spent, purchased, utilised, is increasing exponentially, putting not only a massive load onto the body from a liver function and inflammatory process in the body, but we have an opioid overdose crisis as well. And that means when we start looking to painkillers for our, as a solution to our problems, then we may actually be setting ourselves up for addictive behaviours that become even more problematic. And if you can prevent, manage or alleviate the pain of arthritis naturally, if you can create healing, repair and regeneration naturally, that is the reason I am committed to, dedicated to in fact, providing this information to my community, serving the community to bring a greater understanding because these statistics make me angry when it's unnecessary. These statistics rob people of their lives unnecessarily. And I would rather people find that there is a new information available to them. I hope they never knew it was available, perceived, but that they can. Because I'm not suggesting that there isn't a role for allopathic medicine. There is. If you cannot move, if you cannot function, you need that painkilling medication to allow you to sleep so that you can heal. Because the healing happens during the sleep cycle and if you cannot even heal, sorry, if you cannot even sleep, you are going to have limitation to your healing. So there is a time and a place for medications. But if the advice is take this for the rest of your life, 
I have a philosophical issue with that. Because if medicine offers you, well, just rest, use heat or ice, put analgesic creams, pain management, over-the-counter medications, this goes down. Once one does not work, you move to the next, to now prescription medications, higher levels of prescription till the inevitable steroid injections are used and ultimately surgery. If that is the solution, these images are the outcome. I don't want that for you. I didn't want that for my father, but I didn't know what I know now. I don't want, want that for my clients, which is why I am so committed to not only sharing information, but providing solutions. So let's just think for a moment. We've already said, okay, the body can heal. And using Socratic questioning, if, the, if we have healed in the past, why haven't we healed arthritis? Well, we need to ask better questions. And let's first ask the questions about the interventions that most people are using. What are the risks? What are the costs involved? What are the expected outcomes? And we'll talk about research and options in a moment. But the outcomes are not necessarily any better if we continue to ignore the cause. Treat the cause, not the effect. The symptom is the effect. The pain and inflammation of arthritis and degeneration is an effect. It is not the cause. And I don't know if anyone here drives a, a really lovely car, perhaps an expensive car, and has red warning lights. And if the red warning light came on, would you pull the fuse? I don't think anyone would do that to a cheap car, let alone an expensive car. And your body is valuable. The reason you don't pull the fuse, well, the engine's gonna blow. If you ignore the red warning light, the engine is going to blow. Pull the fuse, you don't perceive it until it happens. The role of a medication is to limit the pain so that you no longer experience the symptom that is the warning light that something is wrong and a lot of people don't heal from their arthritic and degenerative conditions because the warning light is dampened down and they've been told that nothing more can be done. We need new information on arthritis. We need a different paradigm on arthritis. We need an arthritis solution. Our education is outdated when we learn it. And when you speak to people at the cutting edge of research, see that is not gonna get into a textbook for 20 years. And no one, no one is going to know in that time frame. So we're outdated in our understanding of information. Unless you happen to be a person like me that is unreasonably invested into learning. I also happen to be on the board of the Australian Spinal Research Foundation. So I get to speak to the people doing the research right now, providing incredible breakthrough information. It was reproduced again later with a Gallup poll study. And uh, again, if you want these references are available, we're recording this so you can go online if you need to and look at these, uh, these statistics and measures and research papers if you like. And it was just, it reproduced that whole document but it showed greater um, opinions of what was happening with chiropractic and the work that chiropractic was doing on arthritis and degeneration. And that meant if we need new information on arthritis, that we had to abolish three myths about arthritis. And I would like to do that now for you. The first myth is arthritis is inevitable. It's a consequence of aging. The older you get, the more arthritic you become. That is a myth because I have seen evidence of 79 and just this last you know, period of time, a 76 year old with no arthritis in their body. So if it's not a consequence of aging, what is it? It's a consequence of the unaddressed trauma accumulated during aging. Let me break that down because that's a big statement. The unaddressed trauma. We're gonna see pictures in a moment of traumas that people have had. Car accidents, falls, bumps, spills. We have those traumas, but we go, oh, just gonna keep going. I've had a skiing accident, Whiplash, oh, I'm off with my family, I'm still gonna keep skiing. Unaddressed trauma. Sitting at a desk, slumped over a computer, days, weeks, years at a time. Didn't do anything about it because it wasn't that bad. Unaddressed trauma. 
Now it accumulates over time. Trauma begets more trauma. Micro trauma becomes macro trauma. Small damage accumulates to greater damage. Unaddressed trauma. Well, that's the first myth. If we address the trauma, do we have to degenerate? Well, I'd say the answer is no. The second myth, well, if you do have arthritis, there is nothing that you can do about it, that you must take painkilling medication for the rest of your life. You may need painkilling medication. It may add value and quality to your life, but it doesn't mean that you must take it for the rest of your life. And as I said, I, I have incredible respect, reverence for the medical profession because they save lives. If I get hit by a bus, I don't want someone to take me to my chiropractor or my naturopath or my acupuncturist. I want them to get me to the hospital, sew that limb back on and save my life. The reverence, the respect I have, unquestioned. However, if somebody says to me, your child's suffering anxiety, we're going to put them on anti-anxiety medication for the rest of their life. Oh, I'd probably say, hang on, can't we toolkit this child? Teach them how to manage their stress, how to manage their anxiety, how to equip them and empower them to be able to make better choices and, and become more resilient psychologically. A different question than accepting the inevitability. And the same is true for arthritis. Somebody said to me, you've got an arthritic or degenerative condition here, take this pain-killing medication for the rest of your life. I would then say, well, hang, hang on a moment. Arthro means joint, itis means inflammation. It's an inflammatory condition of the joint. Can't we reduce the inflammation? Well, that's what the anti-inflammatory medication does. Well, the body's smart, the body can self-heal. Can't the body switch off that inflammatory response? Now, most people don't either like or know the answer to those questions. And the answer is yes, the body can switch off the inflammatory process within the body. And if the body dampens down that inflammation and facilitates healing, repair and regeneration, then it can heal. And if it can heal, then we can start to see positive progressive improvement in arthritic and degenerative condition. You've already seen Les's x-rays and I've seen hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of x-rays demonstrating exactly that. So we don't need to be on medications for the rest of our life. It's not inevitable don't need medi medications. And the last myth is, well, arthritis accumulates so much damage, you can't do anything about it. And I think the x-rays show that too is a myth. The body can heal. The body does heal. And given the opportunity, the body will heal. And I love this question, would you take better care of your spine if you could see the evidence of neglect? So many people don't even know they've got arthritis or degeneration. And those who do don't know to what extent. And the reason being is we can't see inside our spine. We know with dental hygiene, we're gonna bring this into spinal hygiene in a moment, we know with dental hygiene, if our teeth look like that on the left, we do something about it. And we don't wait till the pain is so significant that we, you know, end up taking injections into our teeth for the pain. We want to go to the, and get our proper upkeep because, you know what? We don't, we, we get to that level of decay on the left in our spine because, and I, and I don't mean to be potentially offensive about this, but nobody wants a bad smelling mouth with rotting teeth talking to them and some will say go see your dentist when the tooth is infected you don't only feel pain you, other people feel disgust for it and nobody accepts that on an interpersonal relational level but no one's looking at your neck going oh my gosh how do you like oh that arthritis in your neck looks disgusting. I mean, I apologise. I'm not. I'm, it's not there. It's not like that at all. But nobody would. You, you do that. I mean, you do that with the teeth. When someone says, "Go brush your teeth, please," you got green stuff hanging out of it. But we don't see the spine, so we can't draw the conclusion. We can't see that. But it should look like that. The two things, dental hygiene, self-evident and obvious. Most people wait till it's too late.
for spinal hygiene. The obviousness of dental hygiene, we all know that that's going to get acted upon. The spinal hygiene and degenerative change is not so obvious. Everyone here looks normal. Imagine a guy walking along with all of that fusing. You wouldn't know. You say, oh, I've just got a sore back and I'm a bit stiff. I don't move as easily as I used to. Do we know what's really happening? If you knew what your spine looked like and that there was damage present, would you take better care? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? And I'm just going to suggest right now, given my personal, but also the chiropractic profession's expertise around degeneration, we can know and uncover and provide answers to those questions. And that's one thing every single week in practice when we look at x-rays and somebody comes and says, oh my gosh, why didn't anyone tell me? I mean, I can't answer that question other than the fact knowing gives us the opportunity now to act. And I wish I knew earlier for so many people so that I could help before it got to the point of significance and seriousness. Now, we're going to talk about the arthritis solution so you have an understanding. I wanted to bring you to this point of recognition that there is a need for change, a need for new information. And so what does cause arthritis? Physical causes. You have a fall. Anyone get tackled when they were younger? Fall at work, text neck at work, unaddressed trauma. Anyone have a skiing accident, didn't go to a chiropractor after? Anyone have a whiplash in a car, didn't go to the chiropractor after? Fall off their bike, didn't go get their spine checked? The list goes on. Spend eight hours a day at work, didn't go get their spine checked? Their trauma has been accumulating. Micro trauma, some macro trauma, small trauma, big trauma, accumulating damaging the spine, interfering with the body's self-healing potential. Anyone here not brush their teeth for three years? Plenty of not checking their spine for three years though. Biochemical trauma. Arthritis. <laughs> Arthritis means joint, itis means inflammation. Trauma makes sense, causes inflammation. You twist your ankle, swells up like a balloon. Most of us have experienced that. Some of you may have also experienced put a lot of gluten in your body, your abdomen smells up like a balloon as well. Not everybody has gluten intolerance though. Some people have dairy intolerance, so you have a big piece of cheese and your abdomen smells up like a balloon again. So there are many toxic or inflammatory processes that take place in the body that contribute to and perhaps even lead to arthritic and degenerative changes. If somebody goes to the GP and limits the prescription to a medication are removing any of their cause. Have we spoken about what traumas are producing the arthritis, adding to the arthritic or degenerative condition? What else is adding inflammation into the body to expand the inflammatory reaction that is arthritis? Are we looking at pro-inflammatory foods? Yes, there are pro-inflammatory foods, therefore there are pro-arthritic foods. And I am sorry, they are the things you love. The pasta, the pizza, the cake, the biscuits, the ice cream, all pro-inflammatory, pro-arthritic, expanding, accelerating the degenerative change in the body. I wish it were otherwise. I actually would love for ice cream like Willy Wonka to be healthy for me. <laughs> it's not. I tried living in illusion once. I put on a lot of weight over COVID as a result. There are also other stresses that produce and contribute to arthritis. This is a really odd one. Well, how can stress be pro-arthritic? No, well, stress produces cortisol. Cortisol is pro-inflammatory. Inflammation is pro-arthritic. Now, anyone ever done a lot of exercise and felt sore the next day? It's called lactic acid. Okay, so lactic acid results in this soreness within the body. One hour of stress produces as much inflammation in the body as 10 hours of exercise. The gold standard for measuring the nervous system function is called HRV or heart rate variability. 
it is how we determine your nervous system's ability to go from stress response to relaxation response, to healing, and have the, whether you adapt to stress that stress response within your body. If you do not have an ability to balance your nervous system, you have a limited capacity to self-heal. And therefore, it's going to diminish your ability to repair and regenerate your body. So mental causes your traumas, your stress, your exhaustion, your conflict. And you may say, well, I don't have any of those things. I've just I've got a job I love. I'm really happy. Your brain cannot tell neurologically the difference between the joy of your wedding day, which should be a wonderful day, and being chased by a lion. <laughs> because neurologically, it's a stress response. You go, Arnie, Betty and Uncle Steve, I can't have them sit together. They're going to kill each other. Got to put it over there. Are they going to cater enough people? And so you, these are all stress responses. Or the deadlines at work. I love my job. It's incredible. Oh my gosh, the intensity and pump that I'm under all of the time. By the way, standing up on a stage. There is no doubt in my mind there is cortisol running through my body. I am not a natural presenter. This is not something that is effortless or easy for me. And there is a stress response in my body. The same physiology as though a lion was chasing me. Unless I can calm down after this, or my nervous system can adapt, I can't go into a healing response. And if that stress is perpetual and relentless, you get locked into sympathetic dominance, locked into inflammation, you accelerate the arthritic and degenerative change into your body. And that doesn't mean you don't have a great life. It just means your, neuro your neurology is primed for counter healing. Because there are many, many people that have great lives, but they're intense lives. And there are many, many people that have heart attacks at 50 because of it. There are other environmental causes that contribute to or lead to arthritis. You know, the poor sleep cycles, too much time on the computer, the toxic world we live in. There is more arthritis in more people's body now than there was when I first graduated. I used to see degenerative change in people's body at 50 or 60 when I first graduated 28 years ago. Last year, I saw arthritis in a 17 year old. He walked in with this posture. I don't know if anyone else has seen a 17 year old with this posture. Took x-rays of your neck, arthritis. It's happening earlier. It's not age. It's unaddressed trauma. And its impact is deleterious. But of course, my suggestion is that there is an arthritis solution. And in order for us to have an arthritis solution, the same traumas that can cause arthritis degeneration have corrections that support healing of degeneration. And it was decades of research that brought about what is the framework for the arthritis solution, which is what I call the total healing blueprint. And that is that we need to look at seven elements. Physical. Well, sorry, I'm going to start that again. Nervous system. Physical. Chemical. Emotional slash mental. Energetic, genetic, and even spiritual. Because if physical trauma can cause arthritis, physical correction can help arthritis. If biochemical trauma can inflame the body further, reducing biochemical trauma can limit inflammation and help the body to heal. If stress can cause inflammation and progress arthritis, then peace, love and forgiveness can heal arthritis. If our energetic system breaks down, then time in nature creates a greater state of being within our body. If we have genetic predisposition to arthritis, well, my mum had rheumatoid arthritis, it's a genetic condition, now I'm going to have arthritis. Well, there's a genetic term called oncogene, okay? And that is the gene that sits above the gene. You have a genetic predisposition, it means you have the likelihood of that gene expressing itself. 
But what causes the gene to switch on is lifestyle in most cases. So if you make lifestyle choices inconsistent with health, your genes trigger the arthritic and degenerative change, but the lifestyle choice also switches the gene off. So you can influence your genetic health potential. And the spiritual element is, it's really quite fascinating, when you have a strong faith, that actually changes your physiology as well. And I'm not here to suggest what that faith should be. It is simply enough to say that finding peace, love, forgiveness, having a sense of faith and understanding that you can heal and that you will heal is part of the miracles that take place. And that first part here is the nervous system. If you cannot govern and control your body, regulate the function of physiology within your body, your body will have difficulty being in that self-healing process. And that is why I think chiropractic needs to be set peace in terms of what, what people do. And I wanted to, to bring your awareness to that. So that seven pillars of nervous physical, chemical, emotional, mental energy, genetic and spiritual. If you do not or cannot bring that into a scope of practice, you're going to have limited impact. And so somebody might say to me, Dr. Marcus, I saw a bit of nonsense really. I've been, in, it might be a doctor for example, I've been in practice 30 years, I've never seen anybody heal from arthritis. It's not possible. I like, ask the question, yeah. So what was your protocol? Well, given me inflammatory medication. That was it? Yeah. Nothing else? No. Okay, so anti-inflammatory medication does not reverse arthritis. Agreed. Is that what I'm suggesting here? What about somebody who says, well, that's all good and well, but no, I, I do, I, I exercise all the time. Well, have you modified your diet? Well, I don't like to do that, I like my ice cream. Well, we haven't got the whole picture then. All right, well, I am eating better and I'm, you know, exercising. Well, how, how's your peacefulness in your heart and mind going? Well, not everyone has a cushy life like you, Dr. Marcus. It's, you know, some of us have to work seven days a week. Well, okay, it's going to produce a lot of inflammatory change in your body. Hmm. And for the record, I actually don't have a cushy life. <laughs> <laughs> I have a blessed life. So it's time for us to realise there is things that we can do, choices that we can make, an opportunity for us to heal. And if we make that choice, I believe a miracle is possible. A miracle of healing that allows you to reclaim your health, maintain your mobility, your independence, your freedom. Live a life that gives you a sense of joy, satisfaction, fulfillment. It's a nice way to live. It's a nice gift to give people. And that's why I want to give you a gift. But before we do, I want to share with you, again, if you would like to take a photo of this now, or if you'd like to wait for the video, I want to give you guys massive value tonight. We have our free Spinal Hygiene e-magazine that we provide, and it has great content, great information. I held recently a dementia and Alzheimer's workshop and much of this that we spoke about tonight applies to that as well. Osteoporosis, we provide education and this is, all, this is on our website at Provolution Health where you can go from our website to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I am relentless in my commitment to communicating and educating my community about the possibility for healing. So these are things and resources that are available to you should you choose to. At the back, my amazing team who I love so much and appreciate, it is, who are so incredible a part of this journey with me, have put together a tote bag. And in that tote bag, those resources are available to you as well. And it will have a whole, the Healing Blueprint of Arthritis, free video content on the exercises, on the dietary changes, all of those elements that may benefit you. As much information as I've been able to put together over years for you, free, because I really want you to have access to that information. And also to book an appointment, which is our gift to you. If you do not know if you have an arthritic or degenerative condition, I want you to find out. 
So we have at the front, uh, sorry, at the back with the team, you can just go organize with them, book a point. There's no charge, there's no fee. It is simply, let's find out if you've got an arthritic or degenerative condition and whether you can be helped. And if you can, we will send you off to Queenbin Hospital where they do free x-rays at our request to find and uncover the extent of arthritic degeneration. If you have already had tests done and have x-rays, bring those with you. We will go through them in detail with you to give you an understanding of what's happening and any potential solutions. There is no obligation, it is simply our gift to you. And I would like to bring up Dr. Cindy at the moment as well. So Dr. Cindy works within the practice and she will be covering a lot of these appointments. She is without doubt the most incredible chiropractor I've ever worked with and is so much smarter than I am as well. I just happen to have the grey hair. And um, so I wanted to acknowledge Dr. Cindy. I want to really acknowledge and appreciate my team. I can't do this without them. And I just want to also acknowledge and appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Cindy. So that's, that's who you'll be getting to see during those processes. Um, I want to acknowledge you for taking time out of an evening. I know that is a big commitment. And having the interest in a better health, healthier and quality of life. And I think that is a great honour. Um, that I get to be part of having this conversation with you. So I thank you, I appreciate you. I open the floor to any questions you may have. I am simply here to serve and assist and help in any way. So ask questions if you feel so inclined.